It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, January 20th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is really disappointed in the Flyers with that game last night. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about with that game and a look ahead to the weekend back-to-back all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello there. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. That is where you'll keep up to date with our episodes, Flyers news, all that good stuff. You can also email the show at lockdownflyers at gmail. Uh, we are going to talk about that 4-1 to one loss to the Blackhawks. The Flyers face the Red Wings and Jets this weekend. Plus, we're going to continue our conversation a little bit on the backup goaltending situation, which is now at a crossroads. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. So subscribe. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube. So join in the fun there as well. Russ, this game was like exactly what the Flyers did not need (laughs) to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Okay, so a couple things. First one is bring it. They needed the iPads in this game, and I'm going to tell you why. They obviously got a scouting report, especially Kevin Hayes, that they need to shoot in the corner. I don't know when in the game they were going to decide that Morazic was fine. You know, he was covering the post just fine. Stop yep. shooting there. It was moronic, like it was robotic. But that's the kind of thing you can correct on the bench with the iPad because you could look at it and say, you know what, he's leaving this open. But without that, all you can do is talk to your guy about it. So you'll lose that little bit of, of, I think, a competitive edge on that. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that I noticed about what Chicago was doing defensively is they were taking away what the Flyers normally can do behind the net, right? Mm -hmm. They usually get somebody or even two guys behind the net, somebody feeds it out front, they can cycle the puck a little bit more. And the Blackhawks just took that completely away and the Flyers did not adjust. And, And, you know, to your point about where they were shooting, I think they just did a terrible job adjusting through this game. Yes. That is 100%. So there's that. Then there's the, well, we're going to play defense sort of like with these active sticks, but it's not going to be good defense. We're not going to, like, make sure we get the puck. We're just making sure we disrupt. And that's where Owen Tippett got caught. And, again, I talked about this. He is not improving in his own end. He needs, like, he, you know, he obviously didn't play much after the turnover, but you can't make a play like that. You can't. Right. And, you know, and of course, on the broadcast, they're like, well, he tried to get it back. He, he didn't try hard enough. And and that was a problem with that. D'Angelo was brutal, absolutely brutal. And the thing about it is even on what was it? The uh, the goal that Kane went in on, he gave up on the play like he got beat and then he just sort of yes. watched it. And it's like, what are you doing? You know, those kinds of things were the kinds of non-effort breaks that Chicago needed to keep that lead. Chicago did everything just a little better. Like they, when they were going to clear the puck, they went and made that extra step. The flyers weren't willing to do the flyers just didn't have that in them tonight. And they should have like they, you know, this is like, you're playing one of the worst teams in the league. This is a game you should win. Uh, They actually, mentioned playoffs on the broadcast which again i know so ridiculous don't do that what are we doing here this is not a playoff team they're not even remotely a playoff team don't do that but you know from again i'm sure the coach is going to say well you know we had a lot of shots and a lot of chance you know he's going to tone it down they don't have practice tomorrow which again so they don't get to correct anything they're just going to go straight 
out of Philly and um, where they go, Winnipeg? I forget. We're not, no, we're not going to Winnipeg. Detroit. Where they Detroit, thank you. Um, and you're going to just go in there and have a morning skate. So the, this is, it's just, it's bad because it's bad from a fundamental standpoint. Everything that the coach wanted them to do, they didn't do. And they didn't do it right. And you know what the other thing is now, too? Uh, on their offensive zone faceoffs, they don't fight for the puck anymore. They lose the faceoff. It's like, ah, eh, we lost the faceoff, and it's just that's it. The other team has it. They clear it out. You know, on the broadcast, they're talking about Lafferty. Hey, he's a risk to get a shorthanded chance. Look, he's down the ice already. Like, shouldn't the Flyers know which guys on other teams are those guys who get shorthanded chances? And when you're on the ice, be a little more careful when those guys are there. I think so. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't know that I would say that I'm concerned that's a huge problem as a trend. It was definitely a problem. No, just in, in this, this game. game. Like, yeah, in this yeah. game. It, it was it was a problem. And, yeah, it was just this general, like, to your point, they were one step behind. It just felt like throughout this game. And uh, I don't know if they were just frustrated because they had they had horrible puck luck and things just weren't going but that's like when you kind of redouble your efforts and right. I just felt like they were expecting things to go in that didn't and then didn't have a good you know next effort right. to follow that up and they were know, like well I this worked last week yeah that's true it's true. And, uh, you know, one thing that they kept saying on the broadcast over and over again, which was a good point, is that the Blackhawks are not the Ducks. <laughs> right. And I, I feel like for they as long as you got, have Kane and Taves. Yeah. And, they got you know. lulled into complacency. <laughs> well, I mean, the, how much more complacent can you get? I mean, you're playing one of the two worst teams in the league like you can't and, and again i'm not gonna say that peter morazic played this miraculous game he was fine peter morazic was fine he did what he had to do he did and what he had to do and he flyers... let up plenty of rebounds too they were yeah they were, there were some glorious rebounds that if the flyers had gained traction on they could have scored the other thing is chicago played better defense in the crease their defense in the yep. crease was better than the flyers uh you know offensive push in the crease that was another another factor in this game so you know it, right and then you look at the other side of the net is in that i i don't think the flyers were especially on top of it in terms of clearing rebounds like carter hart let right. up some rebounds in this game flyers defense did not clear them appropriately and it gave Correct. chicago uh, additional opportunities and i thought they were also kind of puck watching a little bit on on defense in the sense that, you know, anytime the Blackhawks had some just really quick passes and like give and go, or even when they were sort of set up, they would just like dish the puck into the middle and the flyers just were like a half step behind yeah. on all of those plays. And that's especially how um, the second goal was scored, I think for the Blackhawks. And then, you know, of course with that bad, defensive play by Tony D'Angelo on the third goal to seal it, I think for yeah. the Blackhawks, it was just, yeah, it just felt like, you know, there was like lag time for the Flyers. Well, they they were out thought. There's no question. Like Taves mm -hmm. was out thinking them even at this advanced age and you could see the difference that that's the whole thing here. Even, you know, even Travis Konechny, he had a couple of good chances. Sure. But other parts of his game weren't as good. Uh, I always think it's a bad look when you see what D'Angelo did at the end of the game. There's no need for that. Like that's just, you know what? If you're frustrated, take it into the locker room. That's just a bad look. All it does is when he smashed a stick, he smashed a stick. It's just a bad look. All that does is just, re you know, make the Blackhawks feel better about their game and doesn't really do anything. Plus, by the way, you can't, you know, that's thick splinters. I mean, it's like, you got to watch out when you do that with, with players around you never know so i i never like when a player does that i get it once in a blue moon sure but it's just not yeah. a good look it just i you know, think you know trying to pull like a, a positive or two from this game you know i think morgan frost you know obviously he got that goal and yeah. i feel like the effort was there from him mm -hmm. uh he was he was trying to make things happen and you know noah cates was doing noah cates things yes most of the game yeah, I so, mean, Cates is one of those guys that he could probably work 
not probably he could work in a vacuum and and still do his thing and not get derailed and that's and that's yeah. good i i think the flyers need more of those players but i'll tell you what this game is this is the game where even if you were deluded into thinking they were close to being a playoff team in management this is the one where you say all right we're sellers like even if you didn't think that before you know now that you are sellers you can't go anywhere with this team you have to sell your assets so you could build back better that's what they have to do all right well uh, the first problem on the agenda is what to do about Felix Sandstrom and Sam Erson. Uh, we're going to talk about that and preview the game against the Red Wings coming up next. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me, where you want to eat healthier, but don't want to compromise taste, then man, I've got just the thing for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in unbelievably delicious flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And what's even better is they're, health they're healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk into the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, then run in and get a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. Russ, uh, we have the conditioning assignment for Felix Santrum that is officially expired. And so now tomorrow, or today, I guess, uh, the Flyers have to make a decision on what to do if they're going to carry three goaltenders on the roster and potentially send Kiefer Bellows down, or are they going to, you know, take a risk and, uh, and, you know, keep Sam Erson, put Sandstrom through waivers. It, it's a difficult decision for them. And, you know, I, I do mention Kiefer Bellows for a reason and that he has not played in a very long time. And right. so, you know, would it make sense for them to, at least in the short term, send Kiefer Bellows down uh, and get him some playing time in Lehigh Valley, carry the three goalies, and give Felix Sandstrom a start to see how he does, and then make a decision. The only problem with that is is that they're going to be on the road, and you generally don't carry three goalies on the road. Like, that's the thing, unless you have one that's injured. Like, the time, you know, a couple of weeks ago, they had one, you know, they had an injury on the staff, fine. That made sense. I'm not sure it makes sense now, but... What you said could happen. The problem is we're really not going to find out because with no practice and nothing going on until Saturday, we're, we're going to see a transaction like later in the day. Like that's what's probably going to happen. So I really don't know what they're going to do, but I wouldn't lose Sandstrom. I could tell you that. Yeah, I, I just think it's a no-win situation for them because Urson has absolutely won the spot. You know, yes. he was the better goaltender coming out of camp. Uh, and then you know, uh, you know, it was unfortunate for Felix Santrum. Like, I, I don't blame him and I don't think he's a bad goaltender. You no, know, not he, at all. Yeah. And in his conditioning stint, he was four, one and two, a 2.39 goals against average nine, 11 save percentage. So, um, you know, having watched most of those games, I can say, you know, he looked good, but not great. Uh, there was definitely some mistakes there, but I would say he had a, a solid performance overall uh, down there. And I, I think that, you know, based on where things were before he was out sick, you know, you could say he deserves a chance to give him at least one or two games. But the problem is, is that they want to play hard more than that. And if you look at the teams that they're facing you know there isn't really room to have Urson and him play mm -hmm. right there's really just room for Carter Hart and maybe you know one backup goalie game in the back-to-back -back situation um you know I, they could 
put in Urson or Sandstrom against Detroit on the road and then mm -hmm. have Hart play against Winnipeg in the back to back. I think that's very possible as well. So but my you're only bet putting would... off the inevitable here. That's the problem. I know. It's like, like, you like have one to... game really isn't enough to judge, right? No. You're you're putting off the inevitable that way. Um so that's why I think they're going to make some sort of decision because otherwise, yeah, this is going to linger. And if you have an injury on the road, then you're going to end up sending them down anyhow, right? Like that's just, if there's an injury and you've already sent down bellows to put it off and you had the three goalies, but then someone gets injured, they're going to now have to call somebody up. He's going to get risks put on waivers anyhow. And then you have to fly that other player out. So that's, you know, it, it's a complicated situation and no I, timing could not have been worse. I gotta timing say. Could definitely not have been worse. And Flyers fans are already setting themselves up to be upset tomorrow because they're all saying, I know what I would do. I would send down the other guy who, you know, doesn't have, who is waiver exempt. But the problem is the coach likes that player and he's undefeated. So mm -hmm. it's not as easy a situation just to say, well, send him down because he can't be claimed. Well, there's a reason you might not send him down because he's the better goalie. Well, uh, we're going to see what they decide to do uh, sometime today or maybe even tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll find out. But yeah, I, I do. They could make a I, trade. I mean, it's always possible. I suppose, but I'm not sure that's something they want to do at this point. And uh, I just hope you know, Kiever Bellows gets to play somewhere sometime soon. <laughs> I, I think know. it's unfortunate for him. Um, you know, I'm not like itching for him to play for the Flyers right now, but I, I just feel like they need to send him down if he's not going to play. Right. Right. But again, even if they carry three, we know they're not going to do it for a long period of time. They're not. That is true. That is true. Like a week tops. Right. So, all right. Well, We'll see. Uh, what we do know is that we will be facing the Detroit Red Wings on Saturday. And uh, they had a late game against Vegas last night. So uh, we the game hasn't even started as the Flyers game was ending. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got the, the West Coast action. Uh, before that, they lost to the Yotes in a shootout. Um, they played the Avs and the Blue Jackets. They're they're sixth in the Atlantic, uh, have not had a great stretch recently, three, six, and one overall uh, prior to last night's game. Uh, but they have found some success this season, and they're on a really good path in terms of their rebuild and what yeah. uh, Steve Eiserman is doing up there. And I think that you know, they do have some really good weapons. Uh, you know, that Dylan Larkin, Lucas Raymond combo on the top line, you really got to watch out for them. Well, the speed factor is there with Detroit mm -hmm. and that's there. They do have a lot of speed. So you have to watch out for that. They do have some size with Cider and Rasmussen. So this is not going to be an easy game. And this is a game where I, Detroit really doesn't get blown out much from what I've noticed. Detroit, can score goals too when they're when they're hot. They have pretty good goaltending. If Billy Huso's in there, he's been good this year. So this is a game where the Flyers really have to get out of the gate quickly. Like I know I said that two games ago, uh, they did not get out of the gate quickly against Boston in a day game. But even in a night game, it's a night. Is it a night game or a day game against Detroit? Night game. Night game. Okay get out of that gate quickly because, you know, to try and turn around what's, you know, been going wrong lately, I would, that's what I would try and do because otherwise uh, it could be a difficult game for the Flyers, even though Detroit's not a superstar team or anything, they're young, they're fast and that, you know, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. I mean, that that's exactly it is that I feel like the game that, we just saw against Chicago 
is the kind of game I would expect the Flyers to see against Detroit, where right. they've got those those few guys that are really fast and are just going to beat them to the puck. So they have to adjust to that. And, and that's where I worry, right, is that if they couldn't do it against the Blackhawks, who I would say are significantly weaker mm -hmm. than Detroit on everything that Chicago did right last night, I think that th the Flyers really could run into problems. Yeah, I mean, again, we'll see uh, if the line combinations are the same. We'll see if Tippett even plays next game. You know, we'll see a lot of things. Now, if they have three goalies, then Tippett's going to play. Um, so that's, again, so right. those are, but these, these, right, these are the kinds of complications. Like if the coach, you know, decides, hey, I, you know, Tippett really isn't playing great lately. I need to, you know, send a message to him. He might not be able to based on the roster. So, you know, it's a mess. It really is. Uh, one thing that we are lucky with with Detroit is that their special teams have not been great. And so, right. um, you know, I keep saying this. I feel like a broken record. But someday the Flyers are going to have to actually make good on having some power play success. But, uh, you know, the, Detroit is like near the bottom of the league on the PK. So I, I think that this is just one of those times. And, you know, we just had a game where, you know, the Flyers didn't even have to go on the PK. <laughs> right. So. They didn't have to go on the PK. They were over two on the power play. Ten giveaways. Can't do that against Detroit. Cannot no, ten, do that. Ten giveaways. Chicago had more block shots. Uh Flyers had no penalties, you know, like, again, that's, that is a positive, like we were talking about with the PK, but you know, those other things you, if Not you're going to be fly. this kind of team, you have to have more block shots. You have to convert on your power plays. You, I mean, this is the Flyers team can't be one of those teams that say, okay, well, we'll sort of make it up on, on five on five. Cause they're, they're not, they're, they're, there's a talent gap there. Yeah. Well, you know, the second half of the back-to-back -back is going to be even harder than the game against Detroit, and that's uh, Sunday night against the Winnipeg Jets. We're going to talk Ooh. about them coming up next. Russ, the Winnipeg Jets, at least to me, have been one of the bigger surprises of the season. I think yeah. I expected success from them, like definitely a step forward, um, you know, change in coach, change in attitude. You feel like you know, things are, are, are going to at least be better, but they are at the top of the central division, kind of neck and neck with uh, Dallas, um, you know, but if you look at those two teams, you know, before, well, before losing last night to the Leafs, you know, so they're, they were eight and two in the last 10. So now it's seven and three. Um, they lost to the Habs, but have been pretty successful against everybody else they've faced in, in the last stretch. And they have the second best penalty kill in the NHL. So with the Flyers power play that has very little juice to it, it's going to be really difficult to find success uh, against Winnipeg. They have a, a top 10 power play as well. And man, that top line is just absolutely amazing with Kyle Connor, uh, PLD and Blake Wheeler. Yeah. Like I, I love watching them play. It's a super fun team to watch. Yeah. Pierre-Luc Dubois will no doubt want to do well against, against torts. That's for sure. Kyle oh, Connor yes. always does well against the Flyers. He's one of those kinds of guys they have trouble with. Uh, Ehlers is back, but he's not really at full strength yet. So you know, you never know when he's going to sort of get back on track. Um, he's, you know, point wise, he's doing great, but uh, I don't think his whole game is is quite there yet. But he's getting points, so you know that's another that's another issue. Uh, Hellebuck could be in net. Who knows? I don't know how that's going to play out. Which goalie they're going to get? Uh, yeah, that's both teams will be on the second half of a back to back. Right. So I'm not sure who they're going to want to put in versus Ottawa. Right. They may go with their backup versus Ottawa. So Hellebuck plays at home. They may do it that way. Is that no, it's in, it's in Philly. So it's in Philly. Yeah, it's in Philly. So actually, yeah, they may play Hellebuck against Ottawa, especially if it's a, a Canadian televised game. They may do it that way. Yeah. So, yeah, they may go back up against Philly. Um, 
Flyers may get a little bit of a break on that with David Redditch. Uh, although he, you know, he's okay. But yeah. the other thing about um, Winnipeg is with Rick Bonus there is that they're going to play hard. They're going to play physical. They have size and speed, and they're not going to want to make mistakes. So, in a way, they'll play the Flyers game, the game that the Flyers want to play, but probably a little faster and a little smarter. And that's where you have to have the right game plan for this. Yeah. And, you know, for me, if I was going to poach somebody from Winnipeg to join the Flyers, it would be Josh Morrissey. Oh, yeah, uh, you can't poach him. <laughs> well, I'm just saying in a fantasy land, if I uh-huh. if I had a chance to say, okay, which Winnipeg player would I would I take? Right. I mean, I guess I guess obviously I would take Kyle Connor, but you know, <laughs> I love I love Josh Morrissey as a defenseman. Yeah, I think it's terrific. He, he's phenomenal and it is just one of those guys that plays a complete game. And uh I I think that it's going to be tough for the flyers, you know, with that defensive structure and the personnel that Winnipeg has, you know, to have the kind of chances that like, you know, we were just talking about that they could not convert on against Chicago. Yeah. I mean, those chances are going to be fewer. Yeah. Connor's a killer on the power play. He's got 19 power play points. Five of them are goals, eight game winning goals. That's yeah. He's having a good year. (laughs) He's having a really good year. Uh, so this is one where you have to game plan against it. And maybe this is one where they're going to have to switch up the lines. And maybe this is one where they're going to have to change up the power play. But the problem is they're not going to have any practice time to do it. So no. And they're going to be again, like coming off a game in Detroit the day before. So it, it it is definitely a tall order. Um, it, you know, I would just hope that they look better than they did against Boston uh, and against Toronto. Like, I, I feel like this is a, a game that's a, definitely against a much better team. And I would just like them to be more competitive than they have been against these top teams. I think that's really what we need to see from the Flyers. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, that, to me, that's really not too much to ask. And Again, yeah, this is one where, you know, Winnipeg, even though they're at the top of their division, they know that every point is valuable. So they're going to give you their A game. And it's not to say the Flyers aren't trying to give their A game, but sometimes their A effort doesn't last the whole game. It didn't last the whole game uh, this last game against Chicago. That's for sure. So we'll see. I mean, again, there's going to be a point where some Flyers players are going to be playing for their jobs. And honestly, I almost want to see that because, you know, otherwise we're just, it's just going to be one of these situations where you know what the team is. You have to start seeing improvement in some of the areas that haven't been good. There's been no power play improvement. There's been improvement with overall team defense, definitely. So Tortorella has done a good job with that, but I need to see more improvement in more areas. I do. And we're just not seeing it. Yeah. And, you know, as we know, next week is going to be a huge test for them on all of those counts. And up against Winnipeg is a great time to get started in seeing some of those improvements. Uh, We will be talking about the game against Detroit and Winnipeg on Monday, along with our nemesis of the week. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So send your mailbag questions in via Twitter or Instagram at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A N. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.